We're going to talk about the blessing of generosity in that passage from 2 Corinthians in, uh, in just a moment, and Lila is going to come up and read it in a minute. But uh, I wanted to start with, and I was just looking at some answers I got uh, for, uh, from, uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Kelly's generously using her time to host these Facebook Live and uh, YouTube uh, broadcast services, so thank you, Kelly, for that. Um, and uh, I got a couple of answers real quick about who's the most generous person you know. Uh, Kelly, I'm just going to have to summarize this because you wrote a whole paragraph text. It's just awesome. Uh, she was very generous in her text. <laughs> But uh, good, good answer. Most generous person, she says, is my husband, Dave, up for any challenge uh, and anything I dream up to do and want to donate to or money I want to give to help others. He's supportive of that. He says, yesterday we just moved a horse from Gig Harbor, Washington, to our ranch to watch for a friend while she puts on retreats for five months in Costa Rica and was open to hosting. And Dave, you know, so generous heart, helping out a friend. Obviously, the girl is hosting the ranch revival. Thank you for that. Um, uh, they also, uh, lots of different things. And she says, always my biggest fan and biggest cheerleader, generous with time, money, muscles, and talents. <laughs> uh, so that's great. And Jan Dawson, often worshiping with us online, said, just put a name, Tom Holse or Holsey. So have you thought about somebody, though, that's generous? Thought about somebody, anybody that has a, just a, a nugget, a short little something about a characteristic of somebody you know that's been a generous person in your life? Yeah, Jeff. Gerald puts in a ton of time, yes. And one example of the faithful saints. So I know Gerald, he's, he's the last person that wants to be recognized, but a great example of... Gerald, and there's, uh, let me just say, there's a lot of Geralds as I look out here that give a lot of time and help, but thank you for pointing out that. Yeah, Michael. Yes, Michael. Connie and Jim Kenny. Do you know that these guys bring uh, two or three every week from uh, uh, Marquis uh, to church? So, very generous. Great example. Thank you. Yeah. Steve Boone, another hardworking dude. All right, always giving him time, so. But, uh, yeah. Dar Hopper. Dar Hopper. And is, is Dar here today? Dar had a fall, and uh, she's okay, but she cut herself up in a fall about Thursday, I think it was. But, uh, again, a number of saints, right? Very faithful, very generous. And so, you know, as you look around, yeah. Henry. 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 <laughs> Loving Henry. wife Henry. saying that very clearly, her spouse, Henry. Thank you. God most high, he's given us everything. Yeah. He who did not withhold even his own son gave him up for us all. And what does it say? Will he not also give us all things? All things, God is blessing upon blessing. And I, I, wanna, I want you to think about this as you think about generosity and, and people that you've grown up with or maybe somebody you know that just even time they gave you, whether it was a teacher, a coach, a friend, Maybe going through a hard time, they were generous. There's so many ways, right, that people have been probably generous in your life and maybe have infected you with a generous heart too, right? Uh, but it's, as we think about this day and generosity, the blessings of generosity and Stewardship Sunday, well, it's a, it's a lot more about growing than giving because I believe a giving person is a growing person. Would you agree? Somebody that's growing, somebody that's, that's always learning, wanting to know how they can help and bless uh, interestingly enough, a study from Harvard University said that people who serve and give have a better quality of life and are happier. Hmm. Well, Jesus said it first, and that's true. So I'm glad Harvard adapted that, uh, adopted that. And, you know, Paul was recalling Jesus' words in Acts 20 where he said it's more blessed to give than receive. He remembered those words, those words of Jesus. And, yes, giving, it's an act of worship. And that's why we include giving in a worship service. It's an act of of worship, and it changes lives. Uh, several of us from church were at the Adult and Teen Challenge uh, Benefit Gala event. You can make out some of those names or some of those faces, and there's the event. There's the, so that was just about a week ago, a little, little over a week ago, a week ago Saturday. And uh, yeah, look at there. There's Dave Brandt. He, uh, we had fun with that, awesome desserts and fun, and that was kind of just a big old crazy cake, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, and then this person here, Zori, he's an example of how lives have been changed through the ministry of Adult and Teen Challenge. There's people like Zori. There's another man that spoke who literally their lives were in the gutter. They should, should have been dead, attempts, even suicidal. But you know what? God rescued them through people that loved, that cared, that were generous, that gave them hope, and that led them to Jesus Christ as well. A lot of things were in play there. The, the necessity of getting off of drugs and alcohol addictions, but the deepest hope that they received was in Christ, in Christ alone, that healing power of Jesus that transforms lives. And Zori is now the director of Adult and Teen Challenge in Estacada. Uh, the other man that spoke is now a, a, a youth minister in a local church. I mean, talk about night and day. And what do they say? Why do they have these events? Well, they remind us when we go to these gala events, like you've been to many, I'm sure, different things, is that giving changes lives. And giving in Jesus' name is a amazing, our amazing and great God that does miracles. And when we allow ourselves to be used by God to do some, for miracles to happen, it's just enabling that to happen as we, as we give. And that's one of the things that they shared. Uh, giving changes lives. And I think we've seen, and we've already talked about how giving a community of hope. You, I didn't ask you to point out people and names, but it was a great example of how giving helps accomplish ministry in Jesus' name right here at Community of Hope. All the things, from the behind-the-scenes things to the upfront things, from teaching to digging in a ditch, hey, all together under the name of Jesus, and ministry happens and lives are changed. And, you know, we highlight often the big-picture ministries of our church that make high impact, whether it's Food for thought. I keep, I keep forgetting how many bags. Uh, Mary, you've been doing food for thought for probably a lot of years. How many years have, has food for thought been going? Somebody give me the history of that. PD, remember? Uh, huh? Six or seven years. How many, ba how many ba backpacks are going out each week now from through food for thought? 35. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Another food for thought helper. But 35 bags a week. Uh, so... Blessing others in need. Um, I think about Royal Family Kids Camps, the many years that's been helping foster kids and both growing in their faith and just providing an awesome camp experience. Vacation Bible School, our, our ranch revival event that was held this past summer. And the, Kelly mentioned about you know, different people that helped put it on, including the grills with their ranch availability. African Smile. A few of the things that this place, you all have launched and supported and given to but yet then there's the regular weekly things whether it's the ministry that's happening in our kids ministries right now uh children youth ministries worship services bible studies teaching all these things the regular weekly things make an impact they change you they change me and i'm praying they will change the world amen all these ways that uh, god works through us all and recognizing, and I think, Jim, you said it pretty clearly. There's another verse that exemplifies what you just said, Jim. But from Romans 11:36, let's read this together. For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. Glory to God. And so uh, I'm going to look at four kind of key I guess you could say blessings of generosity, generous gems, uh, to use the G, generous gems to remember. And uh, to start us out, Lila is going to read the Bible passage for today. A really uh, solid set of scriptures that reflect on this. So come on up, Lila. And uh, thank you for reading. I love how you bring your Bibles to worship. I encourage that. Lila's got her awesome Bible here that have been in a lot of retreats and a lot of worship services. But thank you for reading. Good morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 15. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, Having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. A beautiful conclusion to that passage, isn't that right, Lila? Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And uh, this uh, passage, um, again, I want to point out four key things that uh, we could spend a lot of time on this, but uh, uh, as we look through the, the verses, starting with uh, verse, verse 6, What's the, one of the first things we see is that, yes, the generous person will reap what they sow. Whoever sows sparingly, reaps sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Uh, so, uh, again, positive things, and obviously negatively, if you're selfish, sinful, you're going to reap what you sow in that direction, too. Um, but you give, and bless, let the blessings come from God. Um, and Paul uses this metaphor of a farmer throwing out seeds, yeah, and expecting them to produce fruit, right? Having the mind of this farmer who plants a seed and gets an apple tree, right? Not just one, th one seed getting one apple, but look at the abundance, right? Tons of apples, uh, tons more seeds. And uh, if you have a stingy mindset, well, I'm going to give a little just to get rid of some guilt. Mm, well, take that route. You're not going to probably reap very much either. But sow generously, reap generously. And uh, yeah, you can see the return on investment both ways, <laughs> Right? Abundance or scarcity. Um, in Proverbs eleven twenty four, 24, we read, One man gives freely and gains even more. Another withholds unduly and comes to poverty. And uh, sadly, sometimes this gets taken in, a, in an interesting and, and diff, uh, wrong turn when people promote this somehow as, as twisting it to mean some kind of a prosperity gospel. Right? That... If you give, this is like, you know, kind of like an investment. You give a dollar, you're going to get $100 back. I guarantee it, you know. Boy, that sounds like some late night infomercial. <laughs> uh, turn that channel quick, right? Um, well, could God bless you financially? Absolutely. As you give generously, is that a blessing that God might give? But what is the key here spiritually from the heart? As you give, blessing upon blessing, right? Um, and I don't know exactly what that blessing is will be for you as you give of yourself, as we talk about time, talent, and treasures. Um, I don't know exactly. Every person, God's going to work in unique ways differently. Uh, but, you know, remembering again, you and I, we don't give to get. We give out of obedience, out of love for Christ, and out of what we've shared already. The one who gave everything for us, we're modeling our lives after the greatest giver, a God himself and his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, some have said about giving, whether it's time or treasures or whatever, it's, well, I can't do that right now. Well, if you can't now, you're probably not going to do it later, right? It starts where, where we're at. And, uh, and then one of the next points in verse 7, we remember, uh, deciding what we're to give, each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for what? Cheerful heart. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver, and the generous person gives with a cheerful heart. I've been doing a lot of just reading and, and studying and looking to God's Word about this whole area of giving, and we've had a really good stewardship team that's been uh, meeting re weekly almost and planning, as you've, maybe some of you have been to some of the after-worship uh, seminars or you've read some of the documents we put out about just about giving and, and needs at Community of Hope. 
Um, I'm just curious. How many of you use the auto giving, like through Breeze or something? And I, do you sometimes feel uncomfortable when the plate goes by and it's like, well, I, I you want to tell you, I give online. Don't worry, I'm not just. <laughs> and in fact, we do have those little cards in the in the entry area. If you're one like me that gives online, you can place a little card in if it makes you feel good. But what are we saying? We're not giving to impress anyone. We're giving out of faithfulness to God and thankfulness, what he's done. So just remember that. But uh, giving is great. Um, Sarah and I do this. But, you know, I heard an interesting way to approach this, a little different than I do now. Um, this pastor spoke about uh, not using the auto pay thing, which I got to admit helps keep you faithful regularly. To, it does work, right? But he said it this way. He goes, whenever I get my, uh, like twice a month or once a month, whatever, whenever I get my paycheck, so to speak, um, I go that same day, right when I see that deposited, and I go to my automated giving, breeze, whatever it is, system, and I'm just excited. Because, like, look at how God has blessed me, and I just want to say thank you to God, and he gives that tithe. Right there, that day that it hits, it's not just something afterthought, oh, I guess it left my checking account, I didn't even see it, but he does it intentionally. And I don't know, I'm... As I've been thinking about giving and tithing, and Sarah and I've been talking and, and praying about this, and um, and giving uh, giving a tithe, giving a tenth, I'm really excited about that. Maybe I'm going to try this for a while. Hopefully, I won't forget. <laughs> but uh, and, I, and we'll, but I'll have to catch up if I do. But um, just saying thank you, Lord, intentionally, not giving reluctantly, but giving joyfully. Look at what you've given me, God, and I give you this tithe back, this tenth. Thanks for all that you've done. So uh, that's something new I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do intentionally uh, as I think about intentionally thanking God uh, for all the blessings that I have. That's just one example of something, right, that we have. Was if you're financially what you receive, but many ways, giving thanks. And the, from Malachi 3.10, reminded of, look at what God says. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing. What will that be? I don't know what it'll be for you or for me. But so much blessing, you won't have enough room for it. Now, okay, 310. Um, Pastor Doug and I have been talking about this lately, and I want to invite you to come on up, Doug. Uh, Pastor Doug's obviously a rich history here at Community of Hope and obviously involved with you and your family. And uh, you were sharing with me a couple of real-life kind of stories, examples personally that you kind of heard, wrestled with about giving, about tithing, and uh, I don't know, I always love having our pastor emeritus, yeah. Pastor Doug, <laughs> uh, share from his heart, so if you would, that'd be great. So, so first, let me just say, it's been such a joy to be part of a, a generous and faithful congregation over the years. It's, it's uh, been a blessing to me, a blessing to see what our generosity has done to help people in this community and around the world. So I want to uh, just have you think about something as we talk about this today <clears throat> and that is probably most people in church have some kind of rationale or thought process to decide how much they give and why they give okay so I just want you to think all right so what what is that for you why do I give and how do I decide how much to give and let me share a story about my journey with that issue. So I grew up in a traditional Lutheran church as a kid, which meant I slept through church all the time. <laughs> Not the pastor's fault, but, you know, it's just a little kid thing. When I got into high school, I started, you know, looking around more, and the offering plates would come by, and people were putting things in. And, and I looked at it and said, this is not for me because I'm a poor high school student. What, this, is, this is for the other wealthy people, for them to put stuff in. It's their responsibility. Then I went to college, and I went to church, and there was a, the offering plates were being passed, and I said, I'm a poor college student. I don't have any money. Look at all these wealthy people here. It's their responsibility to give, not mine. Went to seminary. Went to a church. Poor seminary, and I didn't have any money. I was a full-time student offering plates come by in church, and I said, Look at all the rich people, wealthy people in this church. It's their responsibility to support this. I don't have any money, so I didn't put anything in. Then I went on my internship year. When you study to be a pastor, you do two years full-time. Then you do a whole year mentoring in a church. And I served in Stone Mountain, Georgia. 
with a firecracker pastor who was started four or five mission churches, and this was one that he uh, had started about four years ago. This guy was intense, and he was driven. And so the first day that, that I was um, uh, on duty, he, we met, and I remember the meeting because he had a list, and he goes, Here, here's what you're supposed to do, and he had it all written out, my responsibilities, my, my you know, the, the, all of the, my hours, everything that was going on. And at the end of this meeting, he put a box on the table. And he said, uh, uh, these are your giving envelopes. And you're going to tithe, aren't you? <laughs> uh, or, uh, yeah. Okay. And he says, oh, and we have, uh, we, it's, we're numbered. I'm number one and you're number two. So just, you know, to keep track of your giving. And then I went away from that meeting with that box. And I'm thinking, he's going to know. Whether I can, I'm doing this or not, because anything that's in number two is coming from me. Okay, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to tithe because I need a good recommendation from him. <laughs> I need to tithe and I, because I need that evaluation for the next step. So that's, that was my attitude. And then God just has a way of kind of speaking to you. Several months later, I pre one of my responsibilities is I preach once a month. So about four months into this, I showed up at church. My job was to show up first, unlock the doors, no janitor, clean the bathrooms. That's my job. Do the whole thing, get everything ready. About an hour before church, get a call from the pastor's wife saying, he's ill and in the hospital. You've got the whole deal. Now, when I had the whole deal on my assigned Sundays, I did a whole week's worth of practice. He, and he wanted the written sermon to review it with me, to read every word that I would then read. It was horrible, but <laughs> that's, I, I, I can salute, and I can do what you need me to do. So, okay, I, I've got an hour to figure out stuff. Well, I'll just look in the bulletin. What was he going to preach on? You know what he was going to preach on, right? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 9. And I think, I think I... You know, let me look that up, okay? And, and I read these words. You know, do not give under compulsion or reluctantly. And it just hit me. It's just like a ton of bricks. Lord, that's, that's, this is talking about me, my attitude, how I've decided what to do. Here's the weird thing. I was doing the right thing for the wrong reason. Ever done that? You know, the right spiritual thing, the right biblical thing, but for a wrong reason. And the wrong reason was selfish, self-centered. I just felt so horrible. I felt sick. I felt, how can I stand up and say anything to anybody? And I just said a prayer. I said, Lord, forgive me. Just correct my selfish heart. And I want to give to thank you for all that you've done for me, your generosity beyond anything I can imagine. That's why I want to give. All right, we got that straight. <clears throat> 55 minutes, church is going to start. What am I going to say? And the light bulb came on. I'll just share the story. I'll just get up, share what's happened, share how, what my attitude has been, and let people know that and ask for their forgiveness. And they're great, they were great people in that church in Atlanta. So uh, that was a great Sunday, and that Sunday changed my life when it comes to living and giving. Because ever since then, that has been my attitude and my motivation to give and to tithe thankfully and joyfully for all that the Lord's done for me. That's been the financial foundation for my life then and it continues now into retirement. And it's made all of the difference. And I just want to say as, we, as I wrap up here, um, I pray that all of us here today are so overwhelmed by the amazing love and generosity of the Lord that you do the right thing for the right reason when it comes to to giving so that you can experience all the love and joy and peace that the Lord has to bless you with. In Jesus' name, yeah, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Doug. Wow. Experiencing, I like how you concluded that, experiencing blessing upon blessing, just as we've read of what God has for us. So thank you for that word from your heart. And um, one of the reminders as we look, continue to let Scripture interpret Scripture, um, as we give of ourselves, um, that uh, a verse from First Peter comes to mind about each one of you 
should use whatever gift he has to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. And this is another example of serving, giving, our time, our talents. And if you can see on that, that insert in the bulletin, there's so many opportunities to serve. That's not even an exhaustive list, is it? Opportunities to serve uh, at Community of Hope in our community. And um, I think of the people that serve uh, that I run, run across over the many years, people that give have such joy in their hearts, right? Cheerful, uh, giving hearts, faithfully administering God's grace. And let's admit, what the most precious commodity we have, I would say maybe even isn't money, but it's time, isn't it? Time, when you give of time to bless someone, to listen to someone, to help someone, time is precious. It's so limited, and may God bless you as you abundantly, as you sacrifice time, talents for God's kingdom. Various forms, again, up front or up behind the scenes, God sees, God knows. Uh, another blessing, uh, another gem, a generous person experiences contentment. God is able to bless, to give you peace. Again, not just a little, but what's that abundant word? Abundantly, great return on our investment, so to speak. And whatever it is God has for you, it's going to be good if it's from God, isn't it? Uh, and tied to our obedience. It's been said that many people want to experience the reward or benefits without obedience or sacrifice. And I think about Veterans Day today. You know, without sacrifice, what would, there, what would we be blessed with today? You know, people that gave, people that sacrificed. We have the rewards, the blessing of freedom. And I think about stewardship. Uh, you know, again, do we want to experience the reward or benefits without obedience or sacrifice? Um, just God says, I'll bless you abundantly. Trust me, I'll take care of you having, of having all that you need. And then another just key point on this is that uh, God, yes, desires to bless you abundantly. Obedience brings abundance and puts your heart at peace. And that's what was, Paul was addressing the people in Corinth. Be content. God's provided for you. And, uh, and remembering, again, you just you can't outgive God. He's the greatest giver. Um, uh, and so being obedient. That's what pleases God, puts our heart at peace. So then, then when we are, like Doug said, I think then when you hear somebody preaching about money, it's like, yeah, go, pastor, preach on that. I want everybody to experience that peace, that, that contentment, that abundance that comes, right? It's so right. And uh, a blessed life uh, as giving to the kingdom. And again, what is, it ble what is blessed? I don't know what that's going to mean for you, for necessarily all, for any of us. But it's going to be abundant. And my obedience, God's good. I know I can trust him. Uh, verse 11 of our passage says, you'll be made rich in every way. That you, Yes, you can be generous, blessed to be a blessing. God's given us is not just for us, but meant to be a blessing to others. And then uh, the fourth key point is, the generous person brings thanksgiving to God. And we see that in verses 12 through 15. Uh, and again, thank you. And I say thank you, church, right? Thank you, your service, all that you do that blesses others. And it's both right in here within this church and it's outside these doors. We've lifted up already a number of examples. And I love that verse from Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Uh, Jesus reminds us to let our light so shine before others. They see our good works and give glory to me, right? No, see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Beautiful verse, a beautiful reminder. Everything be pointed to the Lord. Give and be thankful. And that's another mark of maturity, I believe, is spiritual maturity is thankfulness and gratitude, evidence that you're growing spiritually. That, that the last verse I, I highlighted when, after Lila read it, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And that's what we give in response to his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's the first calling that we have to give is to give of ourselves, to give of our heart, give of our lives to Christ in faith. And that we're remembering that beautiful verse, that's that timeless verse from John 3, 16, that yes, God so loved the world. He's generous, so generous, giving his best, his son, that whoever believes in Jesus, the sinless one who died to cover our sins, will be saved. He sent his son that gift and, our, and the benefit 
giving his son the benefit that we will not perish, but that we will have life that's eternal. That's that eternal reward, receiving that. And I want you to receive this verse as that maybe a closing statement that we would make together and, and affirm together as we receive Christ, as we live in him. Let's read it together. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. And these are some thoughts as we close in prayer. Yes, remember, God so loved the world that he gave his best, his son Jesus, for you, for me. And in response, the first and most important gift you can give God is your heart. And will you live your life in response to this great gift, living graciously, living generously?